Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Wednesday, March 8th, 2023, 3.15 p.m. Eastern. We have a time for change call tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. As we have discovered, seriousness is a disease to the soul. A man who knows the divine has a sense of humor. If you meet someone who has no sense of humor, you can be certain that he is a pretender. Knowing the divine brings sincerity, and all seriousness disappears. Knowing brings a playfulness. Knowing brings a sense of humor. And a sense of humor is a must. Let this always be remembered, Osho. Now, have you ever noticed that our level of suffering is directly related to how serious our attitudes are about our lives. The most serious, the more serious we are about things, the harder our life becomes. So why do we continue being serious? What's the purpose of being serious about anything? Do we think that we will reach enlightenment faster by being serious? Do we honestly believe we will attain our ego's desires with more joy and effortless ease if we are super serious about them? Seriousness is a contracted, controlling, egoic energy which blocks us from being relaxed, happy, and able to manifest our desires effortlessly. Our energy becomes like a tight fist, which makes it hard to let abundance in. Seriousness comes from an over-controlling ego that is addicted to desire. It's serious because it just doesn't know how to manifest with joy and effortless ease. It has to control everything, have a tight agenda, and make sure every tiny step along the way is successful. It's forgotten that real success in this life is being in love with each moment along the way. We can have a sincere, a deep, sincere life having real honesty, integrity, and I get caught in the trap of seriousness at all. The first step begins with noticing the difference between when we are being serious and when we are being sincere. We can feel this subtle difference in our chest and body. Our heart and chest will feel more lightness and sincerity and feel and feel heavy and controlled with seriousness. When we are serious, we are coming from our ego mind head. And when we are being sincere, we are coming from our heart and soul. When we look underneath the energy of seriousness, we see that the ego is there, deeply attached to some future outcome. When we look under the energy of sincerity, it has an even deeper quality to it, one that is coming from love, being patient, kind, light, and not attached. Seriousness is very goal-oriented and ready to fight for the ego's survival at any moment. Sincerity is more loving, conscious, and living beyond the material world on the spiritual path. Now, the first step to transcending the ego serious game is making the commitment to shifting our perspective. We must choose to be willing to see each circumstance 
from a larger, more calming viewpoint that realizes we are an eternal being on an infinite journey. We must always be discovering our true infinite divine nature if we're ever to be completely free from seriousness. This means that no matter what happens to us in this life, Whatever we decide to do or don't do, everything's going to be okay. We must choose to realize this deeply and intimately and know that we are eternal souls with unbounded consciousness whose real nature is as wild and free as pure starlight. It is a huge opportunity in this lifetime for us to stop being serious and start having fun. Start with realizing that we are not just this body, nor this mind, nor any of the thoughts that we will be thinking today. All these thoughts that we think are so important are not going to be important at all 10 minutes before you die. So stop worrying about things and and just focus on knowing the spiritual being you truly are. Experience the divine, sweet, undying essence of who you are in each circumstance and situation you get into. We must choose to live the experience of this truth. If we're truly going to seriously stop suffering completely, otherwise the needy demanding ego will just take us down over and over and over again, down the road of being serious about everything and anything again and again and again. The ego is very serious about its job. And it cannot give up until you realize the truth of who and what you are. Now, I believe that we we know we cannot own, capture, or collect anything of this material world. Everything is borrowed. Even these bodies we're in, everything is borrowed. Our souls are the only things we bring with us on this infinite journey. Now, if we could bring everything, where would we put it all? One day, We will leave these bodies behind unless we ascend. And the only thing we can take with us is our consciousness. How much time do you spend being conscious? And how much time are you in your mind? Being serious is a mind game. And it only narrows our experience of consciousness. It is impossible to achieve a deeper level of enlightenment, peace, joy, love, or fulfillment in this life by being serious about it. The only time we reach success is when we get so tired of being serious that we eventually relax. Then the mind and heart begin to open and we expand our thinking and raise our vibrations high enough to enter a state of appreciation, joy, love. Raising our energy into love simply happens all by itself when we realize the truth of who we are, that we are an infinite eternal being at one with the very God source itself. Doesn't that feel good? 
Life is not serious. Life is love. Life is laughter. Life is dance. Laughter, in its purest form, is a dance of all of our energies. Laughter is one of the most evolved phenomenon in human life. No other animal can laugh. It is only man. It is only man who can laugh. Oh, sorry. Perhaps we might be wondering how to approach life's painfully serious situations, such as you or a loved one is facing a terminal illness, or you have to go through a divorce, foreclosure, bankruptcy, or perhaps even contemplating suicide. Life is divine chaotic organization, which makes it both easy and challenging. We each came here to go through some very intense emotional experiences which push us deeper inside ourselves. This is the only way we get beyond our busy ego mind and its need to control every aspect of our lives. Painful, heart-wrenching, emotional experiences force us to become extremely connected to our spiritual path and eventually reach the God source. Our pain is meant to break the ego open, to open our hearts so that our minds follow along and opens to the divine. The pain is meant to make us dig deep down into ourselves, creating roots in our being so that we get grounded in God. The best way to deal with these serious emotional times is to go with them, into them, and through them until you're out the other side. In fact, that's the only way. This inner journey that we all choose to go on requires that we trust in this divine, loving source, know it is always here, encouraging us to breathe, relax, and remember that we are lovable. It is said that that which you which doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. You've heard that. We've all heard that. What they don't tell you is that death is what makes life so juicy and alive. Endings are always new beginnings. And there is a divine reason behind every experience we have throughout our lives. Now, if and when we can take this more enlightened approach to this life, we will find the lightness around our hearts becomes ten times brighter the week after we've made it through the darkest night of the soul. If and when our minds are seriously addicted to drama and we cannot find any way out, then we start practicing the attitude of gratitude. What are we truly thankful for? And it, it, make a list and check it twice. Think about these ideas all day long. Eventually, this exercise will liberate you from the seriousness dis-ease. Once you start living in appreciation mode, the mind naturally wants to focus on what you are thankful for in each moment. Then the seriousness, dis-ease, has to leave your life. The heart opens huge with gratitude, and the overanalyzing, critical, worrying ego takes a long-needed vacation.
Some people look for advice on how this can be done. One piece of advice I can give you is whenever you can be non-serious, be light, playful, and laugh as often as you can. Let everyone else pretend that life is serious. Yet do not walk into the gallows with them. Be sincere in who you are. Yet don't be serious about what you find, everything, what you find. Don't be serious about what you find. Everything comes and goes. Everything. And when it comes down to it, real integrity in this life is only between you and God. It has nothing to do with your ego or other opinions of your ego. The ego is a lot like a shadow, something that is lacking true lightness. It's basically a figment of our imagination. So why buy into its serious love affair when we weave a more lighthearted approach into our daily adventure, we will start discovering the secret to really enjoying our lives and it's so very simple. Every person we know who is unhappy is addicted to seriousness. They're also deeply trapped in their ego minds. They are resisting, denying, suppressing, or addicted to the darkness, pain therein. And so they are constantly attempting to get somewhere better instead of resting with the pain giving it love, being with what it is. Serious people have forgotten how to trust life. And that this very moment is the only place where the God source can be experienced. Once this source is made more important than the ego trip, the most ecstatic, blissful, divine experience of this life We'll find us. The most fun-loving, healing, juicy energy is available in this very moment and will enter us instantly when we drop all seriousness from our minds and future completely. Discovering God is the goal of our lives. It is why we are here having to live our lives. Once the mind surrenders to this real goal and truth, then we have a chance to be free. Knowing God is laughter, lightness, and freedom. As long as seriousness is there, the God source is pushed into the back burner. And we've just delayed our experience of real bliss. One day the mind has to give up. It has to surrender, to trust, and see the bigger picture in each new moment. We don't have to, we don't have to give up our serious attitude completely to find total ecstasy. We get to. We don't have to. We get to. Discovering this attitude is the essential this secret to transform heavy seriousness into enlightened sincerity and having all suffering instantly disappear. And this goes with everything. You ever notice that when you get serious, real serious, there's no light, love, or joy there at all. Period. Not even close. And when we, we, we aren't aware that when we, we focus whatever it is that we focus on, we create. For instance, we have a, a lady uh, who happens to be Gregory Paley's wife who is in surgery right now. And his wife did not drink the water. 
for a very long time that Gregory Paley offers to people lightning age to a water. She just had a different opinion. And so she had a massive heart attack six years ago. And then she had another one just recently. And so her heart is barely working. So they're doing surgery on the back of the heart to determine if they can increase blood flow by opening up arteries on the back of the heart. Now, normally, any of us, there's a seriousness, isn't there? You've probably had a loved one that, similar situation, right? Going to the hospital, sitting in ICU for 10 hours at a time. Uh, you know, some of us have experienced that. And very serious. It's very serious, right? It, it's deeply serious. And this is when we become addicted to seriousness which is the ego. And then we know there's, there's a point where you, you start going within and you start to understand, well, there is a God in her body. There's a God in my body. There's a God in all of our bodies, of that which we truly are. We are all part of the one. So doesn't it make sense that when you focus with deep sincerity, of love, light, and joy, on that body, through the God within it. And it, this, is, this is when the spirit, the soul, wants to stay in the body. And you focus on that heart and that body, through the gods that we are, healing that heart. It's been done before. I'm sure some of, maybe some of you have been involved with that in a situation where you, someone was miraculously healed. So in a visualization of Marie Paley, we, and a quiet time, And we don't, we use sincerity, lighthearted approach to focus from the gods within us to the God within her to assist with the, her heart healing. Not by cutting and incisions and all that crap that this draconian allopathic system uses but the power of the gods that we are and this this is it may be different for a lot of people you know because everybody's got to be serious you imagine what would happen uncle dan right uncle dan could be anybody's uncle. Uncle Dan, you had fun with Uncle Dan. Dan was Dan was a great uncle, and but Dan left the body, and you're at the funeral, and you go up to say something in, in a, your own a eulogy, right? And you start laughing, right? Now you look at everybody in that room, whether it be a church, fill it, whatever, and you look at their faces, and they're all serious. And you turn around and you say, you know something? Every time I think of Uncle Dan, I laugh. Because Uncle Dan never took anything too seriously. He's always laughing. He looked at different things. He looked at things from a different perspective. And he embraced sincerity. And he was a crack up. He was a real card. And that's what I remember most about Uncle Dan. And see what that does is it's a lightheartedness and we're directing uh, a frequency of the God energy within us to heal another through their God energy.
every person that you know who is unhappy is addicted to seriousness. They are so deeply trapped in their ego mind. They are resisting, denying, suppressing, or addicted to the darkness and pain they are in. And so they are constantly attempting to get somewhere better instead of resting with the pain, giving it love, and being with what it is. Serious people have forgotten how to trust life. And that, this very moment, is the only place where the God source can be experienced. Once this source is made more important than the ego trip, the most ecstatic, blissful, divine experience of this life will find us. The most fun-loving, healing, Juicing energy is available in this very moment and will enter us instantly when we drop all seriousness from our minds and future completely. So whenever you come across somebody, right, relative, family member, stranger, friend, and, you, and they're having physical issues, right? Could be, could be emotional issues, physical, emotional, mental. And you say to yourself, I'm going to beam them with some deep eternal love from the God that I am within this body. And I communicate with the God that they are because I'm part of the God that they are, vice versa. And look at the sincerity that that body has is broken and it needs to be fixed. So with lightheartedness and deep eternal love and joy, that's what we do. And in this quiet time of this meditation, not only Marie Paley, but whoever else you can feel and think of on this planet with joy, lightheartedness that may be in physical constriction. Lightheartedness, you put this out. Being serious is a dis-ease to the soul. And this society that we've created throughout the generations teaches everyone in pre-programming, well, you've got to be serious. Why aren't you ever serious? You ever had anybody say that to you? How come, or have you ever said that to somebody? You know, why does... How come so-and-so, I mean, no matter what happens, they just seem to have a smile. They, they don't seem to take anything seriously. Or you have a conversation and someone says, this is really serious. And you notice how that energy kind of, it's kind of it's dank and heavy, isn't it? And, and it always pulls you down. See, that's not discovering the secret to really enjoying our lives. And the seriousness is attached to the ego. And the ego is a lot like a shadow. Something that is lacking true lightness. And it's a figment of our imagination. So why buy into its serious love affair when we can weave a more lighthearted approach into our daily adventure and we will start discovering the secret to really enjoying our lives? 
when you when when someone is ill, disease, and you heard you heard this conversation. Oh, I don't think they're going to make it much longer. In other words, you're visualizing how they're not going to make it. And they're going to leave the body. Right? It's hopeless. Well, there are some of us that say, I see them happy, healthy, and joyous. I see them perfectly healthy. I visualize them laughing, playing, enjoying their lives. That's sincerity. Okay? That is not ego mind. That is God mind. And how often do we do that, right? Do, do we do it to get something in return? Heck no. We do it is because who, that's who and what we really are in these bodies. And then say someone does leave the body, right? And through the heart mind, you're not you're not depressed. You're not suffering. You're not in pain. Because you have discovered many things. Right? You discovered that when one of us leaves the body, it's a celebration. Not through but but things are twisted on this planet where we believe you know, forlornment, missing the physical form of the God that was in that body, right? They're not going to be around anymore, not going to be able to talk with them anymore, not going to be able to interact with them anymore. That's all garbage too. Because you communicate with the soul, with the God within the soul. That is eternity. So the God that was in that body, yes, experienced that life. But the body is over. Your communication is never severed with the God that was in that body. Ever. Because the God that was in that body is part of the God that you are in that body. And the only reason that we all have this seriousness, right, this ego mind, this ego mind figment of our imaginations Deep seriousness yeah. is because the ego mind has mastership over us and we are not consciously aware that it does. And it isn't an enemy. It does help us discover these things. And it's interesting because we can also to ourselves, see ourselves happy, joyous, lighthearted, and sincere. You know, we can, we can, you, you go out to others with this, go to yourself with it. Go to yourself in it. And the God source, once this God source is made more important than the ego trip, the most ecstatic, blissful, divine experience of our lives will find us. And it's all about how we perceive everything around us, including ourselves, without judgment. And how we watch, how we step outside of the ego mind. And we watch. And it, interestingly enough, when these bodies that we're in experience physical trauma, 
could be anything. You know, it could be a car accident, could be not taking care of ourselves and the body's breaking down rapidly. It could be anything, right? We become dead serious. Not only that, we become frightened if it's in, in, the, in the case it's happening to us. We become very scared, worried, stressful, super serious. It's all ego mind. All predicated from the ego mind. Now, when you understand that you are through the God heart, which is the God mind, the God heart, the heart mind, you're able to embrace the fact that this life is an absolute joy no matter what happens outside of you or with the body you're in. See, and now, eventually, with a civilization, some, some few do understand this, but eventually more and more of us will comprehend this and understand through the heart mind is that, you know, Frank Johnson has left the body. Hallelujah. He had a great stay, didn't he? Yeah. There won't be remorse. That's ego mind. Really, there won't be remorse. Because of how you view through the heart mind the God that you are within that body, it isn't a separation. It's a continuation. When, when we have people that leave, when we have gods, right, in the bodies that leave the body, it's a continuation of your interaction with that God because that God is part of you. It just happened to inhabit a body that you were either married to, right? Um, friends, uh, mom, dad, it, it, in any form, any, any physical form. And you have the opportunity to experience that association for quite some time, in most cases. So you have a conversation. There's a lot of people that have conversations with many who have left the body. They aren't looking for a response, really. They'll have, a, they'll have an understanding through the heart-mind that everything is just wonderful. And, then the, and, and see, you'll know it. You'll feel it. You still miss the physicality of that body but nowhere near like this society has been, you know, goaded into believing. Funerals are serious thing. Why? Why do they have to be serious? Well, we lost a loved one. No, you didn't. The body, maybe, but not the God within that body. See, because... Separation for us in one way teaches us how to become closer with the God that we are. Separation, right? You look at all the directions of the bicamerals of this planet that are continually trying to create this illusion of separation in everything that we do. And since we do not have a comparison, this is what we embrace as being the truth. So whenever we can be non-serious, be light, playful, and laugh as often as we can, let everyone else pretend that life is serious. Yet do not walk into the gallows with them. Big difference. Whole huge difference. And it's a choice. It's each and every one of our choices to make permanently. 
And I'm not saying that we won't slip back on occasion, or, but we catch ourselves. Well, why, do I, why do I need to be so serious? Because, because the society dictates that to us? This is the way it is. No, that's not the way it is. This is the way you should live your life. That's not the way I choose to live my life. Because you know something? It's your life and nobody else's. You choose how you wish to live your life, period. And it's absolutely phenomenal when you decide to embrace that understanding. No one's going to make you do it. I don't care who they think they are. They're not going to make you do it. Only you will. So whenever you can be non-serious, be light, playful, and laugh as often as you can, let everyone else pretend that life is serious, yet do not walk into the gallows with them. Be sincere in who you are, yet don't be serious about what you find. Be sincere in who you are, yet don't be serious about what you find. Everything comes and goes. Everything. It has nothing to do with your ego or others' opinions of your ego. The ego is a lot like a shadow, something that is lacking true lightness. It basically is a figment of our imaginations. So why would we buy into its serious love affair when we weave a more lighthearted approach into our daily adventures, we will start discovering the secret to really enjoying our lives. And it is quite simple. It's a shift that you choose to make. I'll join you in the meditation and I'll return to close this out.
taken easy, <clears throat> excuse me, and slow breath in through the nose. And an easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still. We are always on the right path. Trust that the divine, all-intelligent universe does, doesn't know how to make a mistake. When we think nothing is going our way, in this life, we're probably paddling against the river or trying to force the current to flow upstream. It's like we're trying to climb the Himalayas in flip-flops. We will have a much better time letting the river take us and being gentle with ourselves all along the way. Gentleness is, always works. It's the most powerful tool for manifesting a truly abundant, amazing life. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the following morning. We will return here Thursday, March 9th, 2023, 3 p.m. Eastern, 3.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call. Be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times and maintain a supremely powerful attitude of gratitude no matter what's going on around you. And for, for sisters and brothers, like sisters like Marie Haley, when we focus our intent through the heart-mind, through the gods that we are, to the god that she is in that body, and focus on healing the heart. Visualize seeing it going around the back, the front, all the arteries, and healing it. In doing so, we heal ourselves as well. 